biscuits, pork, and a handful of berries. The farmer's children put into their lunch pails whatever is left over from breakfast and get ready for school. farm children are on their way to school to become familiar with words and figures to learn something of the best thought of the world outside and above all to bring home what they have learned and to use it in their daily lives Take your literature books out, please, and turn to page 137. For me, will you read first sentence? And I'll tell you a story, a story so merry, concerning the abbot of Canterbury. How for his housekeeping and how he now, they rode both for him to fair London town. Betsy? And hundreds men to change their faith, the average kept in his hands every day. And fifty gold chains were sad in his death, barely coats raised the every day. Margaret? Now, now, Father Abbot, I hear it of thee, that keepest thee far better house than me, and for thy housekeeping and higher than thou, I fear thy work of treason against my own crown. Clara? My lead quote the Abbot, I would it were known. I never said nothing but what is my own. And I trust your grace will do me no dear for spending my own to gotten gear. Elma? Yes, yes, Father Abbot, thy fault is this high, and now for the same thou needest must die. Except that can answer me questions three, thy head shall be smitten from thy body. And first quote the abbot, when I am instead, with a crown of gold so far on my head, and all of my ligaments so noble of birth, I must tell me to one thing just what I am worth. Laura May. Oh, these are hard questions for my shallow wit. No, I cannot answer your graces yet. But if you will give me but three weeks' space, I'll do my endeavor to answer your grace. Bessie? Now three weeks' space to thee will I give, and that is the longest time thou hast to live. For if thou dost not answer my question three, thy lands, thy livings are perfect to me. An 11th century legend, remote in the lives of even city children, but stranger still for children who live on the land, who help their fathers work in the fields. Then home wrote the abbot of comfort for coat, and he meant 
his shepherd, shepherds are going to the fold. How, 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 my Lord, Abbot, you are welcome home. What news do you, do you bring us from good King John? <laughs> Third and fourth grade geography class up front. Shall we visit home today? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma we get on a great big boat with Alice and go to Holland. And when we get there, we find Holland is a very strange country. It's a very low country, even lower than the sea. And we wonder how they keep the water from flooding the town. But we see some high walls. And we ask a little boy named Hans what the, the, this big wall is. And he says, well, that is the dye that keeps the water back. So Hans invites us to home with him for supper. So the Dutch people are very hospitable, and his mother is a very good cook. The Dutch people are noted for their cooking. We have fish. Butter and cheese for supper, because there's lots of water there, and of course there'd be plenty of fish. After supper, Hans gives us a, leather, a little pair of wooden shoes like his own to walk through the mud, because there's much mud there. We walk across the dike and along the canals, and we come over here to, and see a great big thing, and we say, what is that, Hans? And Hans says, that's a windmill. What do you use it for? Why, we use the windmill to pump the water from the canals and grind our grain. What is this? Windmill? The sawmill stands idle now from time to time. A man can't live by timber anymore. The only trees left to cut are saplings. Once, a hundred years ago, this land was a dense forest. All a man needed then was strength in his arms and a sharp axe. The woods were rich with pine and hardwoods. cut the timber and burnt over the land. They were Scotch and Irish, Dutch and German. They came for freedom, adventure, and land. They wanted a place where there was room for a man to clear himself a farm. They found timber to live by and land to work, till only saplings were left, and the soil gave out. Now we are in Switzerland. See the great big hills, and here is a little boy named Peter who lives there. He'd see his goats, they are his good friends. He takes them around to the people's homes and knocks at the door. He asks them if they want some milk this morning, what they want, and takes the goats on to the next home. Goats get along well in this hilly country, but here they are not kept for their milk. A single goat is herded in with a flock of sheep to keep off praying dogs. There are a few rangy cattle on these mountains, but fodder is scarce, and they give little milk. They have a few hogs, but a good hog needs more to eat than can be spared. And if the farmer turns them loose, they root up everything. The 
first settlers built sturdy log cabins when they came. Some are still standing, dried by the sun and wind of a hundred summers, still serving as homes. Once a fire takes hold, the old dry logs burn like kindling. They've got to save whatever they can and get out fast. Their kin or their neighbors will take them in all right, but they've got to build another house if they can find the lumber. Fat pork and biscuit, cornbread and berries, rarely green vegetables or fruit or juices, just corn and pork and wild berries. A diet which saps the children of their energy and vitality, which rots their teeth and weakens their bones. All too common are pellagra and rickets and dysentery when children go without fresh vegetables and milk. crop three times and work it good and don't seem as though we could have any success that is in raising the corn. How many bushels of acres did you get off this field last year? Oh I figure we got about seven bushel but that isn't enough for the fertilizer that I used. How come this land don't yield no better than that? My wife's grandfather tended this when he was a young man and worn it out and it's still a worn out ground and it isn't fit for corning anymore. Of course, if a man hasn't got nothing else to depend on, he's got to 
He's got to raise a little something. Did you have any hip tin in this crop last year? Yes, I had the woman and the children. There was three of the children used a hole. The woman, she used a hole. Dumpy, he was a water boy. The children used the hoe in the cornfield, just like their fathers. And like their fathers, they have never been told that corn depletes the soil. They do not know that their thin soil could be improved and made to yield a food crop of soybeans and tomatoes. Next year, the children will be taught to meet their present needs. They will study materials prepared in their own communities to teach them facts of soil and food, along with reading and writing. They will be taught to raise goats for milk. They will be taught how to get a better living from the soil, what fruit and nut trees they can grow. They will be taught the means to a better life. Nothing but potatoes, skin infections. Only fat pork, dysentery. Nothing but cornbread and biscuit, pellagra.